This morning, I'm going to be talking to you about faith, not sight. Faith, not sight. So before we get into that, let's just uh, let's ask God to help us receive that. Heavenly Father, help us, Lord, to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Psalms 18, 24 says, This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Do any of you remember that song from back in the day? Does anybody need me to sing it? <laughs> Greg, you're just messing with me. You know that song. I probably won't sing it for you. I'll, uh, I'll have Brittany sing it for you later. But what a great reminder. This is the day that God has made for us. He's made this day for us. What are we going to make out of the day for Him? So, Faith Not Sight was the title of this teaching this morning. And I wanted to teach on this because I think that it's very important for us to understand that sometimes we have to have faith in what we don't see. Sometimes we have to uh, be willing to believe even though something hasn't materialized yet. And I think that we all do that, right? We go to work and we work all week long for a paycheck that hasn't come yet, but it's going to, we hope. It, it has in the past, and just like this song says, Lord, you've never failed me yet. The promise is, though, that he never will fail us. He never will let us down so we can have that faith. We can have that hope that he's not going to start letting us down. The Word says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we can trust that he is not going to start letting us down. Um, whenever I initially put this teaching together, I only had one point. And I thought, man, you know, most teachers at least have three points. And I start reading through everything. I'm like, how can I make three points out of this. Um, and God actually did help me out, so I do actually have three points. So if you want to write this down, you certainly can. You don't have to. You can go back and, and re-watch it online or something like that. Um, but if you want to, the first one is called have faith. Have faith. And I think that goes kind of hand in hand with faith, not sight, right? But we we sometimes think, how do I have faith? How can I have faith? How can I have faith whenever I'm going through hard times, whenever things seem, seem so, um, so imposing, so difficult? How am I supposed to have faith right now? Because all I feel is fear. I feel like that I'm not going to be able to accomplish these things. Well, the Word tells us how to have faith. In Romans 10, 17, it says, faith comes by hearing the Word of God. That's how we get faith, by hearing the Word of God. So that's what we're going to do today. I have several scriptures. You don't have to write them all down. Um, and in fact, you'll probably know most of them. But Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing the Word of God. Today, I think that we need faith more than ever. And honestly, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but I think every day we need faith more than we did the day before. Ultimately, every day presents a new challenge. Jesus even says, don't worry about um, tomorrow because tomorrow is going to have enough challenges of its own, right? So don't sit there and stress about that. Have faith enough for today. Have faith enough for today. So one of the most important things that I think that we can do, and, and I have to constantly remind myself of this so I don't think that you will mind that I remind you of it, but... One of the most important things to do is, is give thanks and praise to God every day, every single day. If you're struggling through with something, start finding the good things that you can give praise for, that you can give thanks for. And a, verse that, a couple of verses that kind of back that up is Psalms, one, uh, Psalms 100, verse 4. It says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. This is, this is kind of a command that we can take away. It's not just for me, but it's for every single one of you. 
This is something that will help us to get our focus back on God. It'll, it'll be something that helps to re-energize us, to give inter, um, enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Be thankful for what you already have and praise Him because He's the God that gave it to you already. Um, right now I'm going through the book of Job and, and trying to study that and, and um, just kind of dissect it more. It's an amazing book. And, and the whole concept of it is, is kind of mind-blowing. You know, you've got this guy that, that he's essentially done everything right. And then Satan wants to sift him like wheat. And so God kind of allows that and puts Job through some really horrific things. Definitely horrific. But if you go all the way to the end of it and you just hold on tight, God blesses him far beyond everything that he had in the first place. So much far beyond because Job didn't lose his faith and he would continue to praise. Now, I will tell you, he, he got to some pretty dark spots, but we would have all gotten to dark spots in our minds if, if we would have been going through that. So as I'm reading it, I'm trying not to judge Job, you know, because he does start to kind of take some, take some hits, especially at his friends. Those guys weren't friends at all, if you've ever read the book of Job. Um, it calls him his friends, but it, if anybody's had friends like that, it's time to give them the boot. You know, you don't need friends like that in your life. But he does. He continues to remember who he is and who God is. He remembers his, his place. This is my place. I'm not above God. I don't get to tell God what he should or shouldn't do. And then God just totally pours out blessing on him above and beyond anything that he could have asked for, anything that he could have hoped for. It was amazing. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is the will, this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ Jesus, his will is to be thankful in all circumstances. You know, because like I've said before, he can see what's around the corner. He sees what's on the other side. We don't. We can't. But has anybody in here been, been through something very, very difficult and just thought, this is, this is impossible? There's just no way I'm going to be able to make it through this. But then, but then God steps in, and he does get you through it. And if you, if you weren't thankful in those times, you might be like me and be like, man, wow, I should have been more thankful because... I knew God was going to get me through it. I knew God was going to take me out on the other side. You know, God has these plans for us that are going to be so much better for us. And, and if we can just remember that in all circumstances, if we can just give Him thanks in all circumstances, it's just going to make that journey a whole lot more um, applicable for us. Amicable, I think, maybe is the term. So, give thanks in all circumstances. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Mm, I love this one. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we live by faith and not by sight. Some versions say we walk by faith and not by sight, but I would like to propose that we go through a lot of life whenever we're not just walking. You know, maybe we're sitting down in here. Maybe we're driving in the car. You know, we live by faith. We have to have faith in God all the time, not just part of the time, not just when we're walking down the road, but whenever you're sleeping at night, whenever you're at work during the day, whenever you're dealing with all kinds of circumstances, we have to live by faith. We've got to live it. You know, this, this verse and the title, um, faith, not sight, we have to live by faith, but we also live, most of us in here, probably live in the show me state. And most of us need to see something to believe in it. Most of us need to, need to, need to know. Well, well, prove it to me. Prove it to me. One of the best ways to, to have faith in God is to trust Him enough to be able to enter into experiences with Him, to invite Him into experiences into your life. Because whenever you walk through these experiences with God, 
you get to go through it with him and that builds your faith. It builds your faith. It builds your trust. It builds your hope in him. So essentially you do get to see it. And God has called us to be Christians, to be Christ-like. So we should be showing everybody else around us who Christ is, who Jesus truly is, who, what, what it looks like to have a relationship with the Father, what it looks like to have the Holy Spirit living inside you. If we live in the show me state, then show people. Show them. Show them by your actions. Show them by your works. It can be, it can be kind of hard to believe, though, sometimes, right, that, that God is always with us, that He'll never leave us, He will never forsake us, especially through those hard times, through those struggles, through those, you know, you got laid off at work, you're going through a divorce, you, you know, you... Uh, got in a car accident, you, your house is getting foreclosed on, these, these crazy things, it can really feel like that, that God's not with you right now. God is with you. He absolutely is with you. And He will help you walk through that. Now, Jesus tells us, and this is, this is Jesus talking after He was crucified, after He descended and ascended, he comes back and he's talking to the disciples. He, boom, shows up in the middle of the room. <laughs> I, I love Jesus' sense of humor. You know, these people are all locked up in this room and boom, here he is. <laughs> Brittany, she almost never can scare me. I mean, almost never. I can scare her any day, no matter what. Like, it's so simple. I'm sorry, baby. Uh, it's not so simple. Like, I got to work at it. But, but the other day I got home from work and it was dark outside and I was sitting there getting stuff ready in my car to be able to go inside and she had come out. I didn't even know it. And then she comes up next to the car and I turn and there she is. I'm, Whoa. I mean, it's one of those deals where I'm like getting ready to reach for something to resolve the problem. And, uh, she... She starts just busting up laughing. Ha, 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 I could never scare you. Well, she did. She most definitely scared me. It, it about got real bad real quick. But, but I just think about the disciples at that point in time. They're all in the room, and then there's Jesus. Ugh. You know, I mean, it just had to have just taken them back quick. But Jesus comes, and he knew what Thomas had been saying. He knew that Thomas said, and pretty much everybody else at this point had accepted that Jesus came back. But Thomas said, man, I'm not going to believe unless I stick my finger in his hands and my hand in his side. And so Jesus says to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you believe. Blessed are those that have not seen me and still believe. That's us, guys. If you haven't seen Jesus standing there physically in front of your face, which most of us haven't, then Jesus calls us blessed if we still believe. Jesus is calling you blessed if you still believe. Man, you can't get a better stamp of approval than Jesus, right? Jesus is telling us, you're blessed because you believe in me even though you haven't seen me. You trust in me even though you haven't seen me. James 2.19 says, You say you have faith for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this and they tremble in terror. I know I kind of I, I turned a corner on you guys there, didn't I? But the demons believe because they've experienced the awesome power of God. They were cast out of heaven like lightning. They saw it. They experienced Him. They, they believe. But it takes more than just believing, doesn't it? They believe, but they don't have a personal relationship with Him. They don't trust Him to be their Lord and Savior anymore. They chose another route. They had the opportunity. They used to be His. They were even in His loving care. But they chose a different route. They chose to step outside a relationship with Him. They chose to step out of trust with Him. They chose to not believe His promises for them. But His promises are for us. I want to jump into some, some promises here. Deuteronomy 13.6 says, 
Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. Some, some say he goes before you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, I've heard a lot of people say that some of these promises in here, that they're not for us. This was clearly written to the Israelites, and it was. I'm not Israeli. I don't know if any of you are, um, but I'm not an Israelite. I'm not a Jew, but these promises are still for me because of what Jesus did on the cross for me. Now, this is in Deuteronomy, and Deuteronomy is the fifth book of the Pentateuch. And Moses wrote it, but the, the, the word Deuteronomy actually means copy or repetition. Copy or repetition is what Deuteronomy actually means. And, and what it is, is it's, it's Moses is writing this account, and he's, he's reminding the children of Israel of God's promises, not only of his promises, but of, of the laws that he has put in place. So this isn't like a second law or something that he's writing here. It's a reminder of the same law. But he's telling them that God will go before you. He goes with you. He will never leave you, and he won't forsake you. Now, if you remember, Moses didn't get to go into the promised land. He got to go into the true promised land, heaven. Thank you, Jesus. That had to have been way better. But it was kind of his last little farewell, if you will. But like I said, the, the promises, people will say, well, this, this, is, this isn't for us. This was for them. Well, then I'd like to jump into Hebrew 13, Hebrews 13.5. 13, and this is Paul reminding the Christians at the time, not only the Christians, um, not only the Jews, but also the Gentiles that came to know the Lord. Paul says the same thing. He's, he's reminding the Christians of that time, and this is New Testament. This also refers to us. He says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Hebrews 13, 5. If you want to look up that promise for yourself, it's Hebrews 13, 5. So I love how he takes from the Old Testament and he gives us the promises for ourselves to be able to, to, be able to accept, to be able to take with us. We can trust that God never leaves us and that he never forsakes us. That brings me to, to uh, point number two. Set yourself up for success. Set yourself up for success. Every day, day in and day out, we are in a spiritual battle for our souls. It's because the enemy, Satan, he's constantly wanting to get at us. He constantly wants to kill us, to steal from us, to steal our joy and our hope. He constantly wants to destroy us. He doesn't want us to be able to continue on. He wants to do anything in his power to take our focus off of God where it should be that's, that's our only hope, that is our salvation, and put it on our trials and our tribulations, our struggles, the things that we're going through in life. And he does this day in and day out. It is his number one goal because he hates you. And he hates me. I'm in that boat. I'm floating right in that boat with you. He hates us because we're created in the image and in the likeness of God. And he hates anything that has to do with God. He tried to elevate himself above God. And God threw him out of heaven with, the, with you know, a third of the angels, which are now the demons, like lightning. He, he could not stand a chance. He Literally, God spoke and boom, he was gone. Psalms 23, 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So, remember, I said point number two is set yourself up for success. This is a reminder that even though I'm going through hard times, you're right there with me. And your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Have you thought about what the rod and the staff are? Jesus is our good shepherd, the Word says. And a shepherd has a rod for discipline and a, and a staff to be able to bring 
the sheep back. If they're in a tough spot, if they're down in a ravine, in a creek or something, he can take that and hook them and bring them back up. Or if they're trying to wander off, he takes his rod. He doesn't like sit there and beat them over the head with it, but he just taps them and it brings them right back into the fold. And this is what David's saying. He says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Sometimes God's discipline is made to comfort us. If we have no discipline, we just run amok, right? You've been in the, in the you know, stores or, or wherever, and you know the kids that get disciplined, and you know the kids that don't get disciplined. And sometimes, I will tell you, I disciplined my kids, but sometimes they acted like the kids that didn't get disciplined, and it's very embarrassing. But they were really young. Now they don't do that. Now I just say, and they whoop. You know, but they, they don't go down that path of absolute destruction because they've been disciplined. We take the Lord's discipline and let it comfort you. Let him bring you back because if you don't, it's going to be a whole lot worse. So he says that his rod and his staff, they comfort him. Man, that's outstanding. Ephesians 6, 11 says, Put on the full armor of God so that you can make your stand against the devil's schemes. So what's going on here? The reason that I, I, I named it Set Yourself Up for Success is because if we want to walk by faith and not by sight, we have to take steps ourselves. We have to do things ourselves to put us in that, in that spot. We've got to spend time with God every day. We've got to spend time in His Word feeding our souls. You know, like I said at the very beginning, faith comes by hearing the word of God. If you want to have faith and you want to set yourself up for success, you've got to hear the word of God. You've got to. You have to keep it being put into your mind. And part of that is putting on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the devil's schemes. The devil does scheme, people. He does have a plan. He doesn't just go about um, without thinking about how to get at you. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your struggles. So he's going to drive it in there. That's where he's going to try to get you. He's not going to go at you with my struggles. He's not going to go at me with your struggles. He's going to go at me with my own struggles and you with your own struggles. He schemes to do this. But God gives us the armor to put on every single day in order to withstand those things. Ephesians 6, 13 through 14 says, Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you will be able to stand your ground and having done everything to stand... Stand firm. My mouth is really dry this morning. <laughs> after you've done everything to stand, after you've put on the breastplate and the belt and you've got the sword and the helmet, you put on the shoes. Now these shoes, I think, Brittany, did you talk about the shoes last week at Bibles and Brunch? These things, if you guys have studied the Roman soldiers, they were the absolute best at warfare in the whole wide world. They conquered so much of the world so quickly because they were brutal, big time brutal. And their, their shoes even that they put on, they had huge spikes on them so that if the enemy was pushing up against them, they carried these big shields. If the enemy was pushing up against them, they could drop down. And just like on a football team or something, you got the defensive line, they drop down and they dig their feet in. Well, that's what the Romans would do. And he says, when you've done everything to stand, you're ready to stand, then stand firm. Don't turn around and run. Don't turn your back to the enemy because you're going to catch around in the back of the head or a spear or whatever at the time. Stand firm. Stand your ground. Sorry. Brittany's like smiling, shaking her head. Come on, Nathan, this is church. But they asked me to preach. <laughs> <laughs> so we have so much more strength and so much more ability whenever we use the armor that God gives us to defend the enemy if we don't it's like going into battle naked you're not going to last too long you're a soft target so stand firm 
Stand your ground. Isaiah 58, 8 says, The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. So, God gives us this promise that He will always be with us. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. I'm getting ready to give you some verses where, um, where it talks about how God does protect us. How God truly does go before us. How He is the protection on our sides and how He's our rear guard. Psalm, Psalms 91 says, well, Isaiah 58, 8, the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. That means if you're focused on Him, you can trust that He's got your back. You can rest assured that He has your back, that He will take care of what's going on behind you. You don't have to look back there. You don't have to be bringing up stuff from the past. God's got it covered. He's taking care of it. All you have to do is fix your eyes on Him and trust that He's got your back and He's got your sides. This is God's love for us. Psalms 91. I'm going to read 1 through 9. If you haven't read Psalms 91, most of you probably have, I strongly recommend that you go back through it and you read it line for line. You dig up the word for word and you study it and you understand it. You get it deep down inside your heart because it's so very important. It will help you to understand God's love for you. It will help you to understand His passion for you and how much He wants you to succeed. It says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely, he will save you from the enemy's snare and from the deadly disease. We can understand the deadly disease going on right now, even though it's probably not as bad as they say it is for some people. And he will protect us from that. Surely he will save you from the enemy's snares and from the deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will will be your shield and your castle wall. His faithfulness will be your shield. He is faithful. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the disease that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. You will only observe that. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make, you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. Did you notice how it said, if, if you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you, and you make the Most High, your dwelling, no harm will overcome you. You have a role in this. Don't get mad if you don't say and if you don't make, and He doesn't. Don't get upset if you don't do your part and then He doesn't do His part. He created you already. He breathed His breath of life into your lungs. He made you to have a relationship with Him and if you don't seek that relationship, how can you expect to have all the blessings? We have a part in this. It's not just, God, I'm going to do my own thing, and you do everything to provide for me. That's not the case, guys. It's just absolutely not the case. You don't go to work and sit down in a chair and tell the boss, you're going to pay me anyway. I'm here. I'm not going to do my job. I'm not going to do what you told me to, but I'm here, and you're still going to pay me. Does it work like that for anybody? If it does, can I get an application at, at where you work? <laughs> Scott, if somebody shows up and they don't go to work, what happens? Boop, out the door, right. We have a role. But I love where it says, you will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. You know what? I would rather just observe with my eyes the punishment of the wicked than be the wicked and get the punishment. We get to choose, though. It's a choice. 
It's a choice that we have to make, that you have to make, that I have to make. Every day we get up, we have to make that choice. It's not that difficult. It's really not. The Word says that if you seek me, you will find me. When? When you seek for me with all of your heart. You've got to seek with all of your heart. He, he wants that relationship. That's what it's all about, relationship. If we could just wrap our mind around the fact that he doesn't want us to be little circus clowns doing little tricks for him all the time, and he just wants to just love on us and us to love on him, then it's just like a father to just pour out blessings, to pour out blessings. And that's what he wants to do, and that's what he will do. He promises that he will. Point number three, stay focused. I know I've talked a little bit about focus already, but I can't emphasize it enough. I can't. Peter would have never sank in the water if he would have kept his eyes fixed on Jesus instead of the wind and the waves. We're not going to sink in the water if we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus instead of our own wind and our own waves. I don't know. Has anybody ever tried to walk on water? I have. I mean, I'll be real honest with you. I have. But I was also the kid that got up on top of the roof and thought, I bet I could fly. And I jumped off the roof. I didn't fly. Now, I will tell you, I did start out on the propane tank and tried it off there. It didn't work, and so I kind of thought, well, maybe I just need more height for that flying ability to kick in. I was wrong, Steve. <laughs> wrong again. It didn't work. But I don't know. I think maybe if I was in a situation where Jesus needed me to fly, he'd probably give me the ability to fly. But I didn't need it at the time. I don't know how I didn't break a lot of bones in my life. But I didn't. James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Did you hear that? Every good and perfect gift. Every single one of the good and perfect gifts comes down from God. For us, it's ours to take. He pours it out to us, every single good and perfect gift. And then, I love how he throws in at the end. He says, who does not change like shifting shadows? As the sun's going down, you see that shadow changing. If you're clearing a room with a flashlight and you're coming around a corner, you see the shadow opening that door. God's not like that. He doesn't change like a shifting shadow with every little move of your wrist. He doesn't. He stays the same. Always. Yesterday, today, and forever. John 16, says, I love this. I have told you all of this. I've told you all of this. So that you may have peace in me. I've told you this stuff so you can have peace in me. Not so you can have stress. Not so you can be worried about things. He's telling us his words, his promises to us, his commands to us, they're not hard. They're not difficult. And in fact, he's telling us these things so that we will have peace, not so we'll have stress, not so things will get harder for us. I tell you these things so that you will have peace in me, not in the world, not in the things that you can buy, not in your spouse, not in your children, not in your parents so that you can have peace in Jesus. That's why he's telling us these things. So that you can have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but have courage or take courage because I have overcome the world. It's, it would be so much more difficult to have peace in somebody that hadn't overcome the world, that hadn't overcome all these things already. You know, the word tells us that Jesus, he's... We've never struggled with something that he didn't struggle with. Wow. That he understands our suffering. 
You know that right after he got baptized by John the Baptist, the skies ripped open and he heard the Father's voice say, Behold, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And the Spirit descended down onto him and remained on him. And right after that, he went and built a great big mansion and just had, had a great life. No. Right after that, right after that, everything should have, in our own minds, they, they should have been great, right? You just heard the Father. No. The Father blessed him with that because he went out into the wilderness for 40 days and didn't eat or drink anything and, in fact, was tempted and tried by Satan himself, not some little demon that bothers us, but by Satan himself, was tempted and tried for 40 days and nights. But he did not sin so that he could be that perfect example for us. If we're going through hard things and we're like, well, God doesn't know, you're wrong. God does know. You think if Satan throws something at you, he didn't throw it at Jesus? He threw everything at Jesus. You haven't struggled with a fraction of what Jesus struggled with. I promise. I promise. Yes, things get hard. But your Savior knows what you're going through. He knows loss. He knows hurt. He knows pain. He knows suffering. He knows rejection intimately. He knows these things. And he tells us all these so that we can have peace in him. I love it. I absolutely love it. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Stay focused. Keep them fixed on Jesus. I was really asking God to give me the right thing to be able to close this teaching out. And I know the Word fairly well. Not as well as most of you in the room because I haven't had the years of experience, but I will get there. And I was just asking God, I said, God, tell me what you want me to close this out with. Help me. Give, me. give me what you want to drive this thing home for them. What do you want these people to hear? And he gave me Hebrews 12, 2. Because remember, the title is faith, not sight. Faith, not sight. Hebrews 12, 2 says, And looking to Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Despite the shame, he was, he was brutally beaten and tortured and hung on a cross completely naked. Despite the shame, and is seated right now at the right hand of the throne of God. That's where our Jesus is. Jesus is there. The Holy Spirit is with you. He said that I have to go so that the Helper can come, the Holy Spirit can come and live in you. But Jesus right now is seated at the right hand of God. Right now is seated at the right hand of God. But it says that He is the author and the perfecter of our faith. He authored faith. He created it just like He created everything else. He created faith, but not only did He create the faith, He perfected it for us. And the way we get that perfect faith is through hearing the Word of God, being in tune with Him, being in communion with Him, building that relationship. Most of us in here all have a relationship with God already. I understand that. I totally understand that. But I also understand that I have a relationship with Him, and I have to develop that relationship every single day. I haven't arrived. I haven't gotten there. And I would imagine none of you have either because you're still here. If you got there, he would have taken you just like he did Elijah. You know, you're finished. Come on home. That would be pretty wild. He's the author and the perfecter of our faith. And he went to the cross and endured it for the joy that was set before him. Do you know what that joy is that was set before him? Look in a mirror. 
and you'll see it. You personally are the joy that was set before Jesus' face. And that is why he endured the cross. That's why he endured the ridicule. The ridicule. That's why he got the crown of thorns beat into his head with a stick. That's why he was whipped and his insides were literally coming out. And his hands and his feet were nailed to a cross. That's why he went to it because he was looking at your face before that. That's why he endured it. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross despite the shame that was about to come. I don't know, guys. I love y'all. But if I knew that I was going to a cross for that kind of death, I don't know. I would love to say that I could. But I can't promise you that I could. But he did. Man, it's absolutely amazing. But he's the author and the perfecter of that faith that we need. That faith that we need, we can only get it through him. Keeping Jesus in mind and the things that he did for us in mind. I just want you guys to reflect on your own faith and where you stand in your faith. I also want you to reflect on how contagious is your faith. I've had times where my faith definitely wasn't contagious. But Jesus died even for that. But guys, we have this faith not just for ourselves, but for everybody around us, for everybody that you can think of, for everybody. And he wants us to show it as much as we possibly can. So the next time you're somewhere and you feel that, like that pulling on your spirit to talk to somebody and that fear starts to well up inside you and you're like, oh, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. Yes, you can. Yeah, you absolutely can. Because the Word says that you can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength. Through Christ who gives you the strength. So show people. Show them your faith. Walk it out. Don't hide it. Don't hide it at all. Y'all can get ready to play the music if you would. If anybody in here wants more faith, wants more strength and ability to be able to do the things that I talked about today, but you feel like that you can't get there on your own, you, maybe you've tried. Maybe you've tried time and time again, but you couldn't get there on your own. Then what I would ask you to do is be bold enough to step forward Whenever the music's playing, I'll come down here. Rod will be down here. The other elders will come up, and we'll pray for you. My wife will come up with me, too, in case it's a woman and she doesn't just want to come up to a man. That's fine. But we will pray for you to build your faith, that God will build your faith, that he will strengthen your spirit, that he will strengthen your whole body to be able to overcome that fear and to step out. Jesus overcame the fear of being naked and beaten and drugged through the city and hung on a cross naked for you. He's not asking you to do that, thank goodness. But we'll pray that God will build your strength and your faith to be able to step out. So whenever the music plays and we end, then... Uh, if that's something that you want more of, come on up and we'll pray for you. If you have anything else that you want prayer for, maybe you don't know Christ at all and you want to give your life to him, come on up.
we can handle that too. If you're sick, you want prayed for, we'll lay our hands on you and pray for you. If you know somebody that's sick or somebody that needs prayer and you want to come up and stand in place for them, come and do it. It's absolutely biblical, and we will absolutely pray for it. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that you give us faith to be able to walk through this life. You give us the strength and the ability that you go before us and you prepare the way for us, and you protect us while we're going, Lord. God, build our faith. Wherever we're weak in faith, Lord, build it up. Build it up. We know that you do, God. Strengthen us. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on you in everything that we do, and everything that we say. Help us to put you at the center point of every single thing that we do and every decision that we make, God. Lord, help us to impact the world for your kingdom. Help us to show people your love and your mercy and your kindness and your grace and your forgiveness and help us to show people that you are the Redeemer, the great Redeemer, and you can redeem us from anything that we've ever done no matter what. Help us to understand that more, God. Help us to love you more deeply and help us to love others just like we love ourselves, Lord. God, go before us and watch over us as we go out throughout our day, Lord, and we pray these things in your mighty name. Amen.